Here is the Kazakhstan representative, Nazim Kazaybe. And this promises to be a really entertaining bout. Wang Yuyan eliminated the tournament number one seed, Marlon Esparza, in her semi final yesterday. And this boxer, Nazim Kazaybe, eliminated the tournament number two seed. That gives you an idea. And that, by the way, is the Indian boxer, Sham Jetsabam. So that gives you an idea of the quality of these two youngsters. Kazaybe, just 22 years of age, as is Wang. Kazaibe, the number one ranked boxer in the world at the 48 kilogram light flyweight division. She's a reigning four time national championship gold medalist, is Kazaibe, and the reigning world champion from two years ago. So, looking to retain her title that she won in Jeju. So, this promises to be a contest of high skill between two highly decorated talented boxers. Wang is the reigning Chinese national champion at 48 kilograms. So this Kazai Bay just getting her equipment checked by the referee. So the final instructions ahead of this gold medal bout is Kazai Bay looks to retain her world title. So the opening bell sounds then. 48 kilogram light flyweight action underway. The gold medal bout between the reigning defending world champion Nazim Kazai Bay. She's the boxer wearing blue representing Kazakhstan. And the boxer wearing red, the slightly taller of the two boxers is Wang Yuyan, 22 years of age, the reigning Chinese national champion. She eliminated the tournament number two seed at the semi-final stage yesterday. And it's going to be interesting to see who can stamp their style, their authority on this gold medal bout. Kazai Bey is one of those boxers from Kazakhstan who can switch. We've talked about it before that Kazakhstan produced so many southpaw boxers, but with Kazai Bey, she's a talented boxer indeed. She's boxing as an orthodox now, but she switches to southpaw very fluently, and she's got a lot of skills, Tash. Yeah, I was just I was just watching that, and when, when she does switch to southpaw, it's going to be a battle of the feet, and you can get the foot on the outside and, and, and produce the best backhand. There's a nice backhand there over the top. Beautiful counter right hand by Kazaibe. And prevailing in that semi final yesterday, she earned a repeat victory over Shamjets, Shamjet Sabam. And that's a repeat victory from the World Championships. Beautiful counter left hand, lovely use of the feet. And down goes Kazaibe, getting in a little bit of a tangle. But just moments before that, the manner in she, which she pivoted off to the right and then countered her opponent with a left hand was a joy to behold. She's just got to watch it though, Kazaibe, when she is switching from orthodox to southpaw. Now and again, her feet come very square. Look, there, right on cue, that's what happened. She was boxing as an orthodox boxer, gets tangled up there. But as she went forward, she's orthodox, but when she switched to southpaw, the feet come square, and that's a fault, and that's when you can get caught. But she's fairly strong and talented, we know that, but she's just got to watch out for that, Kazaibe. So, a competitive opening round, remember, Four twos in women's Aiba women's boxing and a healthy crowd in attendance once again. And they've got four boxers to cheer on the home nation. They'll be looking to get themselves off to a winning start with a world championship gold, a repeat world championship gold for Kazaibe. But that was a competitive round. But the flashes of superior boxing perhaps coming from the boxer wearing blue. Yeah, she switches, doesn't she, Tash, from orthodox to southpaw. I think she had a fairly good round, but she got caught herself here and there, didn't she? Yeah, I thought I thought Wang was a bit wide with all his shots. She was trying to come o up and over. Um, if she just keeps them straight and, and, and direct, then she'd have a bit more success. But yeah, because uh, I'd be won that round for me, and it's reflected there in the score, all three judges. Just a reminder, it's the 10-point must system in effect, no longer the rolling score clock that was a feature of Aiba boxing for so long. Five judges seated ringside, three of them selected randomly before the opening bell. And those are the ones who will score the bell. So into the second round then, the reigning defending champion Nazim Kazaibe. 
number one ranked boxer in the world got off to a unanimous points decision win i say a win she took the opening round in unanimous fashion for all three judges demonstrated her switch hitting ability and wang she had moments of success but she was beaten to the punch as her ten punches tended to be slightly wider allowing kazaibe to shoot down the middle good work to the body from the boxer wearing blue we may see wang now coming forward because the corner will have told her that she lost that opening round so she probably has to step on the gas a little bit and go through the gears and put her opponent under pressure just a little bit more i think um, wang will have to do here because she's trying to throw these long looping shots um, even though because uh, has got the smaller reach because her shots are going straight through the middle and direct she's she's connecting first all the time wang should be using her reach and trying to keep the shot straight and not going over and out this part of the tournament for both of these boxers good left hand to the body from wang before for what the third time in the contest we see the boxers tumbling to the canvas hasn't been the tidiest of affairs but remember pressure is immense on both of these boxers they've no olympic qualification at stake in this particular weight class because there's an untidy more once again and of course getting themselves championship hardware or oh, good work off the ropes from Kazai Bay and another beautiful right hand before spinning back to the space of center ring. And boxing well under the pressure of expectation. The home crowd looking for her to retain the title she won in Jeju two years ago. She could have fairly square Kazai Bay on that on the ropes, but she's got good accuracy. And that's probably been the difference in this round. She's hit her opponent with some lovely shots, even when her feet have been square. Two boxers just letting their hands go after the bell. The fans here absolutely delighted that turquoise blue flag being waved enthusiastically by the fans here because this boxer produced a very good two minutes once again. Yeah, I think they'll be fairly um, pleased in that corner because I may come under a little bit of pressure at times here when coming forward because I thought she. she got the better quality work the eye catching shots when she got back up on the ropes here look catches there with her opponent with a good right hand and the left and Tashi did the better work didn't she because I in that round yeah I'd say so um again it's just about the, the, the it's reflected in the score she's she's just she wants just taking that them outside shots trying to half bend the shot um, over because I arms and it's not working for her because she because I was just going straight and, 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 and hit connecting first every time. So as we move into the second half of this gold medal bout, can the boxer wearing red Wang Yu Yan, part of a 10 strong Chinese boxing team here. They had representatives in every weight class, but she just eaten another left jab there. Can she do something different to try and get herself back into this contest? Because the first, the second round was really a repeat of the first. So can Wang change her strategy? Can she do something to take Kazaibe out of the comfort zone that she finds herself in and again picking her punches wonderfully well Kazaibe she's just throwing straight shots and moving her feet and that's all she's doing and and Wang's got no answer for it I think another example also uh, of a boxer who when, when they get in at close quarters doesn't do the, the, the right work I'm talking about Wang now when she does get in close you watch she gets tangled up she's not creating any room or space to land quality shots on the inside she starts her attacks off from a little too far away she's got to move in more with a jab and, and with a front foot look when she gets there hands, that was good. that's a little bit better but she's a little bit wild you see and that's why it's very very scrappy very scrappy indeed boxes repeatedly finding themselves rolling on the canvas but not by virtue of punches but the untidy mauls that are taking place at short range punches are coming in wild and and because uh, Ibe's footwork is getting her out of the way and it makes it's making Wang look silly and falling over. Wang, good, beautiful lead right hand once again from Kazaibe. Despite both of these boxers being to just 22 years of age, there's a vast difference in the amount of international experience that they bring to the ring. Kazaibe competing in her third world championships, having picked up a bronze. Good work off the ropes once more from Kazaibe. So she Earned a bronze in 2012, took that aforementioned gold in Jeju two years ago. Lead left hand driving Wang backwards and a strong finish to the round by the reigning world champion for Wang Yu Yan. This is her first appearance in global competition. 
the reigning national champion of China, but stepping up to international competition here and has acquitted herself very well indeed by getting herself through to the gold medal bout. But it looks as though she's going to have to settle for a silver unless she can produce a knockout punch because she's been on the receiving end of shots like that for three continuous rounds now. Quality work there from Kazaibe. With again, it's the accuracy that's probably the difference. As, as Tasha said, uh, Wang is just a little bit too wild, and, and Kazaibe's words are a lot more direct and, and accurate. Another round goes to Kazaibe. So it, it, the same thing. Wang was a bit more successful in that round because she, she landed with a few backhands of her, of her own. Um, you know, it's a, it's a choice of whether you're, you're happy to 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 go out winning, losing 3-1, or whether you, you want to go and win. So there's Marcelli. She'll be contesting the gold medal bout, having defeated Katie Taylor yesterday. She'll be facing Russian opposition, and that's why we're seeing that graphic there. But make no mistake, this is Kazakhstan versus China in the 48-kilogram light flyweight gold medal bout. And the boxer who is in control of this contest on the front foot is the reigning world champion, Nazim Kazaibe of Kazakhstan she's won the three preceding rounds unanimously 10-9 across the board and Wang while well, she's been competitive she's landed particularly in the third round the odd successful single shot but this has been the story of the contest unable to close the distance and when she does she finds herself running into blue fisted leather from Nazim Kazaibe if you're Kazaibe's coach now. I mean, you, you, you're telling her just to keep her shape and just to keep neat and tidy because she's won this contest. She's just got to get through this round so it's not making any mistakes. They keep the guard nice and high and just wait for your opponent to come in. But basically, try and box off your back foot, let the opponent come tash, and you're protecting the lead, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. And on, on the reverse of that, if, if you're the Wang's coach, you're saying, yeah. you know, if you want the gold medal, you've got to go for it. And she, she looks like she's trying to do that. She's been a little bit successful with, with a couple of backhands, but it's Kazaibe who's, who's, who's listened to her corner best. Well, it's been a commendable run to this gold medal bout for Wang. Unless she does something dramatic in the closing 30 seconds, she's going to come away with a world championship silver. Fifth bout of the tournament, and she beat the number four seed at the quarterfinal. And she beat Josie Gabuco from the Philippines, and she beat the Number one seed, Marlon Esparza, the Olympic bronze medalist at 51 from London 2012. She beat her in the semi-final yesterday with a really accomplished display. But facing off against the reigning world champion has proved to be a task too far. Nazim Kazaibe, while she was in control for pretty much all four rounds of that contest, there was more urgency in the work of Wang in the fourth and final round. But to the delight of the fans here, at the Barris Arena in Astana, one suspects that we are going to see the boxer wearing blue have her hand raised in the gold medal bout for the second successive World Championship tournament. Very impressive display, composed display from Nazim Kazaibe. So let's head to centre ring and get the official announcement. Nazim Kazaibe successfully retains and defends her world championship title, a unanimous points decision winner over Wang Yuyan of China. And what a wonderful moment for this boxer to be crowned a world champion for the second successive tournament, but this time in front of her home fans here in Astana. Absolute jubilation up in the stands. That's replicated in the ring between boxer and her coaches. In complete control for all four rounds, weathered the more aggressive storm put forth by Wang in the fourth and final round, but really she got enough insurance in the bank over the course of rounds, one to four, one to three, and just coasted home in the fourth. I thought so, I thought she boxed very well in that last round, just seeing the contest out, and uh, I suppose it doesn't get much better than winning a world title in front of your home fans, Tash, that must be amazing. It must, and, and they do play a part, you know, every every shot you land, the cheering, the, you know, it can influence the judges, and it also gets you your adrenaline going. And, and so there's evidence of Wang's more, more aggressive 